What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Evil Dead the Game video. Today a huge one for you as we have our first in-depth look at gameplay and just how this game works. Thanks to Game Informer, we have a several page article sharing some details on the game as well as some legitimate gameplay footage from both the survivor and demon perspectives. So let's start first with the overall gameplay. What is your goal as a survivor? Now there are three main stages to the game. First, you must find three different map pieces that are spread across the map. And once you find these map pieces, you are then able to see the lost pages of the Necronomicon and the Kandarian Dagger on the map. To collect these items, you have to take on a horde of deadites. At both the Necronomicon and Kandarian Dagger checkpoints, the survivors must hold out against a fierce tide of enemies until the collection is complete. It's important to stay within a circle radius to keep the completion meter ticking up while under assault. The demon player will do everything they can to knock players out of that proximity or just kill them outright. The demon's energy charges up exceptionally quickly during these special events, so they won't have to bounce around the world picking up infernal energy to power summons and skills. They can perform all their summons, scares, and possessions on cooldown during the collection events. So, once you have successfully collected the dagger and missing pages, you then have to take on the Dark Ones. Now, the Dark Ones spawn at a random location on the map and are surrounding the Necronomicon. As a survivor, you are now able to use the dagger to attack the Dark Ones to slowly deplete their health over time, all while still taking on the Demon Player, the hordes of Deadites they throw at you, and the attacking Dark Ones as well. Once you take out the Dark Ones, you then have to defend the Necronomicon from the Demon Player as a timer counts down at the top of your screen. Keep the Necronomicon safe during that time, and you'll be victorious as the team of survivors. So that's the core concept of the game. As survivor, you'll have to rely on looting the map to find things like health, weapons, shields, etc. that may prove to be crucial for your survival, especially when taking on those bigger objectives like the missing pages and the dagger. But what abilities do you have at your disposal in order to be successful as both a survivor and a demon? Starting first with the survivors, there are four different classes that you can choose from, each having multiple characters that have their own unique abilities. The first class is Leader. Leaders come with beneficial auras that incentivize you to stick with the team and buff everyone up. This ability includes things like fear resistance, damage resistance, additional damage, all kinds of good things that make you a perfect team player. While this may seem like the default way to play, certain strategies might have your team going in pairs or completely splitting up to tear through the map fast before the demon can achieve a significant strength. Leaders include Ash from Ash vs Evil Dead, Annie Nobi, who's perfect for team comps that love ranged damage, and Lord Arthur, a melee-centric buffer that starts with a sword. Then you have the Warrior. Do you like getting in the thick of it with heavy melee and some bonus health? If so, Warriors are the class for you. Why worry about bullets when you can bash, slice, and glory kill any Deadite foolish enough to cross your path? As you might expect, most skills for Warriors reward players for getting in there, including things like health for completing finishers, area of effect melee damage, and bonuses for getting hit or your shield depleted. Warriors include Ash from Army of Darkness, Scotty and his Lumberjack Axe, and Henry the Red, who can go fully immune to everything for real action. After Warrior, you have the Hunter class. A stark contrast to the Warrior, Hunters prefer to dish out their damage at range, inflicting more punishment and are able to hold more ammunition. This class includes skills that start matched with ranged encounterments and headshot bonuses. Hunters seem to have more abilities that sync up with treasure hunting to help find and procure better loot during a match. Hunters include Ash from Evil Dead 2, Crossbow Specialist Ed Getley, Kelly Maxwell, and Amanda Fisher. Amanda has a powerful ability that allows you to blast away without consuming ammunition, making her a serious addition to any starring cast. And last but not least, the Support class. Supports have a potent baseline effect, so every time they use standard health or shield consumables, they also trigger on allies close by. They also start with additional consumables and have abilities to allow them to offer massive boons to the entire squad, bringing a team wiped back from the brink of death. Don't ever feel like you're going to have a bad game if you're stacked with support, because the crew will be incredibly tough to take down. Supports include Ash from The Evil Dead, Cheryl Williams who can create a fantastic healing zone, and Pablo Simon Bolivar. Pablo can craft amulets, shield consumables, for your team and boost your shields in various ways. So there you go, all the classes that are available to survivors in Evil Dead the game, all of which include a version of Ash, meaning that technically every player in the lobby 
can play as Ash if they want to, which is a nice touch. Now, based on the class descriptions, it sounds like teamwork and diversity amongst classes in your team may be crucial for survival. Potentially each player rocking a different class, or maybe always ensuring that you have a support player to keep health and shields high. But let's go ahead and move on to the different demon classes, of which there are three. And first you have the Warlord. Warlord demons are perhaps the most basic demon playstyle to understand, an archetype that allows for big buffs to deadites, making them dish out more damage and take less. In a big fight where survivors are stuck in place going after one of the primary objectives, Warlords can punch them down with raw power. The Warlord boss can summon up boss Henrietta, who's packed with sheer offensive and defensive stats for standard attacks. However, Henrietta is at her best using her special abilities, such as laying down a toxic trail of gas, perfect for wrecking survivors huddled around a healing kit, fallen ally, or objective. This technique combines well with another powerful area of effect skill she commands, a monstrous belly flop that can shred health bars. Outside of her area attacks, Henrietta can also lock down a survivor in a granny hug, forcing the rest of the team to free them from the dead grab. Next, you have the Puppeteer. If you're the kind of demon player that likes possession minion and player alike to do your dirty work, Puppeteer is the archetype for you. Instead of direct force, Puppeteers require more finesse and planning to do work, but the results can be devastating. Puppeteers can summon the boss unit Elagos, which players might recognize from Ash vs. Evil Dead. While Elagos may be a bit more fragile than other demons, he's every bit as dangerous, perhaps even more so in capable hands. Elagos is invisible during movement, meaning you can easily sneak up on a group of survivors engaged in battle with some lesser deadites and initiate a telekinetic surge to immobilize the entire team. Elite puppeteer minions can clone themselves and force opponents to move or face lethal shocks. Expect a shift around into units more often while playing this archetype, which is tailored to a more active control style demon. And last but not least, the Necromancer. Necromancers unsurprisingly command skeletal legions and have access to a special unit, the Skeleton Flutus that doot doots your opponents into an early grave by buffing up the rest of the army. While immobile, the Flutus is an extremely high priority target that will cause huge problems if not removed quickly. Later skill additions can even render survivors unable to use healing consumables while in its musical range. Necromancer will likely prove to be a popular pick amongst demon players, as its boss is none other than Evil Ash from Army of Darkness. Evil Ash can summon skeletons, bring them back to life, and even use a life force choking grab to isolate and drain a survivor, replenishing their hit points. With judicious use of abilities, Necromancers can find themselves in command of a skeletal army that's too much to handle overwhelming survivors with inspired, undying troops. So there are your demon class options, which really come down to just what your playstyle is. But no matter what demon you are, what can you do as a player to be successful when taking on a team of survivors? As a demon, your goal is to collect infernal energy in order to create traps, spawn deadites, and possess those deadites, as well as items and other players. You collect infernal energy by moving around while you're invisible as a demon, and going through these red orbs you see here. When you possess the Deadites across the map, you're also taking over any abilities that they wield and heavily increasing their health to take on the survivors yourself. Now when you die as you possess Deadite, you then go back to being invisible and can regroup for your next attack. A key component to your success as a Deadite is increasing your threat level, which occurs slowly over time, but can be accelerated by attacking players and instilling fear. With each threat level increase, you gain a skill point that can be applied to different abilities in the game, like Infernal Energy, Possession, different types of demons, etc. And as you upgrade these abilities, you'll become more and more powerful, drastically increasing your chances of success as a demon. Now, as mentioned previously, instilling fear in survivors is a great way to increase your threat level, but also, as a player's fear gets too high, you gain the ability to possess them, which for obvious reasons, can affect a team of survivors tremendously. To increase other players' fear, you can drop jump scares across the map, as well as trapped portals, and you can even jump scare players yourself by launching towards them when invisible as the demon. Now, playing as a demon seems very intuitive with a massive learning curve, so it's probably going to take quite a bit of time before we're able to just dive in and start destroying survivors. But at the end of the day, it's still an asymmetrical game, and the demon certainly has plenty of tools to take advantage of. Uh, but hey, that's your first real look at gameplay within Evil Dead the game. I think it looks like an absolute blast, and all of the crazy gore and jump scares just seems to be so true to the franchise. And as a fan, it's just amazing to see. 
I mean, if you're interested in seeing the full videos dropped by Game Informer, I left links in the description below. Now, they should be dropping a few more videos throughout this month, giving even more details on the game, which we'll obviously be covering right here. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss a video in the future. But that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know all your thoughts on these new details in the comments below. And of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.